Please welcome back Ryosuke Hamaguchi. Thank you very much. And to interpret, we have Stacey Smith. Thank you. Um, so I will start with um, something you said in the introduction. When you said when Murakami mm -hmm. saw the film, he couldn't remember what was his and what was yours. Um, I read this short story yesterday, so I, I remember <laughs> what, <laughs> what, you, what you've changed. And it's actually a lot. Um, I don't want you to have to go through all the changes. But I was wondering if you can talk about what were the most important ones for you, because you've added characters, you've added backstories, yeah. you changed the color of the car. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, a lot of things. A lot of things that you, you've done. Yes. あのまず本当に三時間ご覧いただいてありがとうございます。あのとても残っていただいて嬉しいです。First of all, I'd like to thank everyone for sticking around for the whole three-hour duration. I'm very happy. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> あのまあ、本当に一この原作はまあ日本語で50ページぐらいのまあ短編なので、まあ、仮に2時,間2時間ぐらいの長編を作るとしてもまあ要素としては足りないということであのまあかなりあの変えていますその「女のいない男たち」っていう短編集に入っている他のまあ物語から要素を持ってきたりとか、まあ、あとその指摘いただいたように車の色を変えたりしてます。Uh, in terms of the original work, it was only about 50 pages in Japanese as a short story, so I figured that two hours would not be enough to convert it to a feature film. <laughs> um, this is uh, the collection, of course, uh, Men Without Women, so I incorporated other elements of other short stories that were in this collection, as well as what Dennis referred to, changing the color of the car and other details. The car was originally white, but it was a まあ、ご覧いただいたようにその車が風景の中を走り抜けていくことによってまあ日本の風景が映るというのが一つのまあプランとしてあったのでその時にまあ黄色という色だとまあどうしてもその風景の中に埋もれてしまうその緑の中に埋もれてしまうというところがあったのでまあそれが目立つように赤にしています。Um, of course, yellow is a fine enough color for a car, but as you can see, the scenery in the film uh, plays a very big role as they're doing the driving. Uh, so one of my plans was to incorporate this Japanese scenery in the film. If it was yellow, it would tend to blend in more with green and other colors in the background, so I picked red as a color that would stand out more. I think one important development in, in turning it into a film is um, the play, is Chekhov and Uncle Vanya, which is mentioned in, this, in the short story. Really, it's just mentioned a couple of times, <laughs> but you've, in some ways, mm. not just adapted or expanded Murakami. I think you've kind of adapted and interpreted Chekhov as well. So I'm, I'm wondering if you can talk about this, this, uh, this, you know, mingling of Murakami plus Chekhov, which I think is just what's going on here. Hi. Eh, to, well, but first, I want to mention that, well, I have done my own thing, but I have never done it myself. But I think Murakami Haruki himself has had a very big impact on the Chekhov from the beginning. That's the first thing. そしてあのドライブ・マイ・カーの中でまあ今言ったように本当に23行ぐらいしかワーニャおじさんは出てこないんですけれど原作の中ではただあのまあ明らかに家福はワーニャと対応させられているし美咲はおそらくソーニャと対応されているっていうのはそれは原作を読んでも明らかだったのでまあその要素をあの膨らませていくっていうことをまずしました。Um, yes, uh, first, as you said, in terms, well, I first would have to say that in terms of, um, it wasn't just something that I added myself into the film. This was something that um, Murakami was very influenced by uh, when he wrote his short story by Chekhov. Um, of course, in the original version of Drive My Car, it was only maybe two or three lines of Uncle Vanya, um, but I thought that I had to make this more uh, clear or prominent in the actual story because it tied to uh, the stories of uh, Kafuku and Misaki. So this is something that I thought that I would need to expand. The, ワーニおじさんを、まあ、家福が一体どんなことを具体的に仕事としているかっていうことを、まあ、示す必要が映画の中ではあるのでそれでワーニおじさんを何度か読み返しましたでその時にあの家福の心情として家福がこれを演じると思って、まあ、読んでみるとそのワーニャの、まあ、言葉っていうのがあの家福の,あの、まあ、言葉にできないことをもう言葉にしているような印象というのをあのとても受けました。それはこの小説のようにはその一人称の語りというのが使えないのであのこの映像表現の中であのどうやって彼のまあ決して本心をなかなか口にしない彼の心の内を観客にまあ想像してもらうかという点であのワーニャおじさんすごくあの重要なものに感じられました。
<clears throat> Uncle Vanya and Chekhov's play. We, I had to show this in the film. This is something that we really had to depict. So for that purpose, I reread uh, the original work, um, Uncle Vanya. Um, and so this was something that really connected to Kafuku's um, beliefs. Um, the words that he were not, it was not able to say were actually said through the play, um, Uncle Vanya. Uh, so this is something that I really felt when I read the work again. Um, I wasn't using the first person, so we had to use images to convey these thoughts that were in Kafuku's head that he was not able to uh, convey. And that's why um, Uncle Vanya played a very significant role in that. Can you talk about the, just this idea of a, um, an international cast and a multilingual production yeah. of Chekhov and also the way um, that Kafka works with actors mm. and I'm wondering how close it is to the way <laughs> you work with actors. Yes. っていうものuh, in regards to Kafuku doing this line reading and keeping it as emotionless as possible, um, this is something that I actually do uh, with my actors. Of course, it's not that simple to say that the more you uh, do this uh, sort of emotionless practice that you're going to have a better product, um, but it is something that comes into the process. そう、直に言えばこれは別の企画で、あの、こういうことができたら面白いんじゃないかなということで思いついたものだったんですけれど、あの、今回、ま、原作からの変更点として、ま、カフクが俳優だけじゃなくて演出もしているっていうま、こと
Um, so in terms of the multilingual aspect of it, um, it's something that basically at that, in that exact situation, they're reacting to each other with a lack of emotion. They're simply playing off each other or reacting to each other. Um, I actually said if emotions do arise at that time, they can actually um, say those or play into them. Um, but with the multilingual aspect, of course, they're not understanding the actual meaning of the words. Um, so instead, the body language and the actual voice is what becomes more important to convey those feelings or the emotional state uh, of the respective actors. Um, it becomes easier to focus and easier to react. I think, in terms of playing it out this way. Um, but I try to look at it as an overall, um, that's the overarching way I look at it, to get a, a more simple, a, more, uh, a better performance. I want to ask about the driving scenes. Um, yes. The car is a very important location, and I think in, in, in you know, many important scenes take place as these conversations that happen in cars. This, I should point out an amazing sequence in a car in the first part of Wheel of Fortune and Fantasy as well. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering if you can talk about designing, um, you know, and staging those scenes. I think when when um, when Monty Hellman tried to make Tulane blacked up, like the, he almost didn't get. Much. He had to convince the, the financiers that there were enough camera angles, mm -hmm. like to shoot inside a car. So I'm just wondering if you can, you know, talk about how you. There's so much that happens in the car with such precision and variety in this film. はい、ありがとうございます。あの、ま、モンテヘルマンの名前を挙げていただきましたけれども、ま、その自分がま、唯一ま、この車の全体像を撮るということをほとんどしないというか、空間の全体像を撮ることをほとんどしないで、ま、
Uh, I just want to say right here that I have no intentions of making a sequel, uh, but I was just sort of um, playing around with things um, at the end there. Uh, one other thing I'd like to say is that the title um, also might give a clue uh, to how you can interpret uh, the ending. Okay, uh, I think we can take one or two questions, depending on how concise they are. So let's start here. Question is so, thank sure, you. Sure. Question is about representing disability both in Asako One and Two um, and in Drive My Car. あの、ま、この障害を扱うっていうことに関しては確かにま、すごくなんか悩ましいというか迷うところもあります。え、ただま、その ま、寝ても覚めてもであっても、ま、一つだけ心がけていることは、ま、彼らを、ま、障害者として何か欠けているものとして扱うっていうことはしないっていうことです。あの、彼らは、ま、ちゃんとコミュニケーションが、ま、
ありませんもう解釈は全てあの役者に任せているし現場でも感情的なものっていうのはもう役者に対して説明するということは一切ありません。Um, this is something, very honest, this is something that I did feel.、Uh, for me, text, it's a very powerful tool, whether I'm writing it or using it in a performance. It's something that I most rely on as a tool.、Um, once I give my、um, actors the text, I really leave it all to them to interpret it how they'd like to.、Uh, even when we're、um, you know, on the scene or when we're filming, any kind of emotions or things that come up, I rely on them to use this text as a tool. どんなテキストでもそれが起こるわけではないんですけれども、ある種のテキストっていうのは、まあ役者の体からあのそれがうまく役者とつながることができれば役者の体から、まあ、彼自身の、まあ、彼彼女自身の、まあ、歴史みたいなものかその人がどう生きてきたかっていうことまで、まあ、引き出してしまうことがあるようなあの気がしています。であの僕が今回そのチェーホフのテキストに関して感じたのはでもその「下腹」のセリフに書いてあることですねそういう点でそのチェーホフのテキストっていうのはあの精度が高すぎるぐらい高いというか。あの必ずそれをその役者に対してあのなすことができる。まあだからその百年以上ずっとこのテキストっていうのは残っているんじゃないかというふうに感じてます。Um, I don't think this applies necessarily to all texts. It has to really be a text that connects to、uh, the performer itself. What I mean to say is that you refer to the pulling out、uh, from the performer. It's going to be、um, taking their history, how they live their lives. All of that is coming、um, from the text.、Um, in regard to Chekhov、uh, itself, I thought this was really something the lines that, were in, that I used for Chekhov really、uh, synced well with、um, Kafuku、uh, for this text. And if you think about the,、um, the level of Chekhov's work, it's such a、um, sublim sublime text that I think that's why it's been performed for、um, over a century. It's stuck around this long. So at 7 30 today,、um, Risuki Hamaguchi will be participating in a free talk in the amphitheater if you'd like to hear more from him.、Um, but for now, I just want to thank you for this brilliant film. And yeah, thank you, Dennis.、Well. It was a pleasure to talk with you again. Thank you.